This video is brought to you by my two books, Practical Music Theory for the Rock Guitarist and the Blues Guitar Bible. Want to learn about modes, harmony, scales, chord substitution and keys? Or maybe you're interested in supercharging your blues guitar rhythm and lead chops. Whatever you're interested in, I guarantee you will be hitting the fast lane to progress with either of these works. Both feature video demonstrations and tutorials, loads of tabs and jam tracks to play along with, and I promise you, everything is explained in crystal clear plain English. Check out the links in the description for more details. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition, as always. I do hope you're well. That little piece of music there was just me sort of demonstrating a particular little songwriting trick that is used by pretty much everyone really. Um, and when I say everyone, I don't just mean the people that I listen to, the bands and musicians that are uh, special to me, you know, half a dozen sort of classic blues rock style what's i mean literally everyone got a little bit of a list here of um the artists and bands and songwriters and composers who will do this very thing that i was demonstrating there we have the beatles queen abba david bowie elo and the rolling stones and tchaikovsky and bruno mars and louis armstrong radiohead hank williams and beethoven and Ray Charles and Oasis and Nirvana and Mozart, Billy Joel, Beyonce and Cole Porter. And Joe Cocker and Nora Jones, Steely Dan, The Beach Boys and Paul Simon. As well as Schumann, Keith Jarrett, Frankie Valli, Elton John, Elmer Bernstein and Dire Straits. To name just a fraction of the people who use this little particular songwriting trick. So if you're in the business of writing songs, or it's something that you do just as a hobby, or even if you're not remotely interested in writing your own music, but you do like playing other people's music, at some point you have to figure out, you know, providing you're not just going on ultimateguitar.com and um, hoping to find the right chords on there. You know, at some point you're going to be uh, figuring out what chords are in a song. So if you understand uh, the, the techniques that are used to write a song makes them easier to learn you know you're less likely to be puzzled by a chord that you just can't figure out and also if you understand how a song was written you're more likely to be able to remember what's going on you're not going to have or you're less likely to have that horrible moment on stage where the audience are looking at you and you think I've forgotten the next chord. It's happened to me. I'm sure it's happened to you. Anyway, so here's a little bit of information on what that songwriting trick is and how you can use it. Here is the explanation. Okay, this is a really cool little trick and it's so simple. It's not going to take any time at all to explain. Basically, in any given major key or minor key for that matter, you've got one dominant seventh chord. And that's usually based, if we're thinking in terms of the major key, on the five chord. And if you remember from a few weeks ago when we, when we looked at, um, you know, how to tell what chords are in a key, just to recap on that, uh, there's your one chord. Go to that shape, like the A shape. At the same fret, that's your four chord. And then move it up two frets. 
that's your five chord okay so one chord four chord five chord now what a dominant seventh chord is it's basically a major chord with an added note and the added note is the note two frets below the root or 10 semitones above it it's called a flattened seventh basically um so there's my e e major chord and i can add a d note to that to get it to make it into an e7 and that pulls me back to the a chord you can hear that there's a very strong resolution back to the a chord let me just move this microphone that's what a dominant seventh chord is and there's one of them in any given key so a secondary dominant chord which is what we're talking about here is when we add another chord in another dominant seventh chord into the key and the easy way to find and, you, and basically what you can do is you can use these secondary dominant chords to steer the chord sequence and target uh, a chord that you want to end up going to maybe just to kind of change the direction of the chord sequence a little bit or just resolve somewhere other than the one chord um, the easy way to find a secondary dominant chord is just take the um, the root note of the chord that you want to end up going to um, so in this case maybe a D minor Find the root note of that chord on the 6th string, there we go, and then go on to the 5th string and go up 2 frets. So what you're doing is creating an interval of a 5th if you want to get technical about it, like that. Okay, That note there is the root note of the 7th chord that is going to take you to your the, the chord that you want to end up steering towards. So that is an A note. So if I want to go to a D minor or a D major for that matter, any kind of D chord, if I want to go to a D major or D minor, I can use an A seventh chord. So A seventh goes to D minor. And you can play these anywhere. A seven to D minor. And I did that in the um in that little intro piece there. You know, where, where's a good example of this? Well, you know. Little Sultans of Swing thing. Uh, but anyway, those are secondary dominant chords. I used a couple in, the, uh, in that intro piece, as I've said, the A7 going to D minor. But I also used a D7 going to a G minor. Overall, that piece was in the key of D minor or F major. I was using that borrowed chord thing um, that we looked at a, a few weeks ago. Um, I'll put a link to that down in the description if you want to know a bit more about that. But given what I was talking about last week about tonality, about you know establishing one particular chord as the overall musical center of gravity of a piece of music, then this is a great way to do it. If you find that you've painted yourself into a bit of a corner as a songwriter and you just can't make the chord sequence go back to the chord that you want it to sound resolved on, use a secondary dominant chord. Um, you know, and as I say. All you got to do is find the root note of the chord, major or minor, that you want to go to. Uh, find that on the sixth string. So, you know, at one point I went to a G minor. There's a G note, and I did it via the D seventh chord. Simple. Uh, such a simple but effective trick. Now you know what to do. Go away and have some fun with it. And as always, you'll find a full tab for that piece of music at the top of the video in both Guitar Pro and PDF formats. An extended version of the piece of music as a jam track, um, you know, just so you can strut your funky stuff and play some um, some cool lead guitar over it. Um, the explanation you've just seen there, the clip of me playing the piece of music, all that usual stuff, as, along with um, a fact sheet about secondary dominant chords, all of that is up on my Patreon page. There's the address, link in the description as i'm sure you know by now three dollars or three pounds a month gets you access to all of these additional goodies that go along with these youtube videos and a massive massive thank you to everyone who supports me in that or any of the other ways including the uh, tier two patreon membership for six dollars or about five and a half quid a month where you get extra content and uh, a twice monthly hangout with uh, me and the other tier two supporters on zoom every other tuesday uh thank you to everyone who supports me in that in those ways all of which are 
as I say down in the description. But that's pretty much it for today, folks. Hope you've enjoyed the video and found it useful and informative in some small way. And if that's the case, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already done so. And why not drop me a like as well while you're at it? And as always, don't forget the live stream every Friday, 5 p.m. UK time. Beer, chat. That's what we get up to there. It's great fun. It's a fantastic way to kick off the weekend. And I'd love to see you there if you can make it. But for now, I'll bid you all a good day and say thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your time. Time. Look after yourselves, folks. Stay well, stay safe, and above all, stay sane. Bye for now.